The first thing we need to do is configure Pangolin Beyond to use DMX. The steps for configuring Pangolin Beyond are as follows. First, we need to configure the DMX input on Pangolin Beyond. This can either be done through ArtNet, which we'll be using for this tutorial, or you can use a hardware device such as the Entec DMX USB Pro. The next step is to configure DMX channels inside of Beyond. In this tutorial, we'll use the standard DMX profile, but we're going to add four additional channels. We'll have two channels to control the tap sync and resync functionalities, respectively, and then one channel to control laser intensity effects and one channel to control multicolor laser effects. Then you configure the zones within Pangolin Beyond and then configure whatever cues you want to use. My first step is to configure Pangolin Beyond to receive DMX input. I'll go up to the settings menu and then under the DMX option I'm going to choose DMX ArtNet settings. In the dialog that pops up, under the Connection tab, I'm going to specify for my Universe 1 input that I want to use ArtNet. I'm going to use Universe 1 and Subnet 0. Now let's say I'm not using ArtNet, but I'm actually using an Entech USB Pro. Under the DMX menu, I can easily change this to use a different input. If I go over to the Entech tab, I can see that I have an Entech device connected on COM board 3. I'll go ahead and click on Update List just to confirm that there's no new devices that have been added. Once COM3 has been selected, I'll click on the Connect button. This will tell me that well, I'm now connected to the Entech USB Pro. Now, from the connection menu, for that input 1, instead of specifying ArtNet, I could specify the Entech device. Now that Pangolin is configured to receive DMX input, we need to configure what DMX channels will be available to us. By going over to the Input Option tab and specifying Enable FB3 Style DMX in Control, I have my default DMX profile inside of Pangolin Beyond. This is a 15 channel profile that will let me access, by default, things like which page and queue I'm currently on, and I can see by selecting each channel in the Info pane what each one of the value ranges uh, represent inside of Pangolin Beyond. Of particular interest to me, for this tutorial will be the page channel, the cue channel, the fade or intensity channel, and then the color channel. If you wanted to add other special effects such as controlling the scanner speed or specifying zoom sizes, things of that nature, these are all channels that are available for setting up inside of a lighting console. One important note is that the FP3 style control input is available in all three versions of Pangolin Beyond. That's Beyond Essentials, Beyond Advanced, and Beyond Ultimate. The channels that are available in this profile are usually enough to handle most busking situations. Now we need to add some additional channels inside of Pangolin Beyond. In this tutorial we'll be using PangoScript to add the additional functionality we need. Now, very important note, writing DMX to PangoScript is a feature that is only available in Beyond Ultimate. In order to do this, we're going to go up to the Settings menu and choose DMX to Pango Script. For the sake of brevity, I've already written the Pango Script for channels 16, 17, 18, and 19. This Pango Script will handle an event whenever a tap sync is triggered, whenever a resync is triggered, and then we have special code for handling DMX values and outputting them over a range for laser intensity effects and for color effects. Once we're done writing our custom Pango script, we need to make sure that we click on the DMX in button. Once you click on the DMX in button, Beyond will be in a listening state for any DMX input. One of the key advantages of using Pangolin Beyond with DMX input is that we have complete control over the scanner areas. This will allow us to, through the software, control and prevent potentially dangerous levels of laser light from entering into the audience. For our tutorial, we'll be using four scan zones, one through four respectively. If I look at the geometric correction on each one of these zones, I can see that they've already been set, so I don't need to adjust these. Now, if I go look at this within our visualization software, Realizer, I can turn on each one of these scan zones and see 
exactly where these scanners are going to output. I can see that this is well above the minimum required height above our audience. The final step here is going to be configuring cues. Now, what we want to do is determine which cues would be used within our busking scenario and specify which output zones they're going to go to. For this tutorial, we're just going to specify every cue on every page is going to output simultaneously to all four of our zones. In an actual busking scenario, if I wanted more control over this, I can actually configure different channels on my lighting board to turn on and off a zone. Now, of particular note is beam sequences. These need to be edited differently than regular cues within Pangolin and Beyond. I'm going to select a beam sequence I want to use, right mouse click, and choose Edit in Quick Targets. Once Quick Targets has my beam sequence, I'm going to go up and choose the Edit option and specify for each one of these particular uh, positions which zone it's going to output to. So the way this will be divided up is into groups of eight. Positions 1 through 8 are going to output to scanner 1, positions 9 through 16 will output to scanner 2, and so on and so forth, until all 32 positions have been configured to output to a zone. 